Welcome back everyone to Pinetopia. Since the last episode, I learned that there wasn't one stray Fletcher I had. I had two of them actually. And I encouraged the other one to become a cartographer. So we now have a cartographer on top of our librarian. And I've unlocked a few things here. I've unlocked the ocean map and the woodland explorer thing. And I might as well buy some banners. I'm mainly buying these banners. Not because I... You don't need to push me. Mainly I am getting these so that I will be able to... Unlock the next level of the trades. There you go. I think that'll do for now. Let's see what we have at the final level of there. And what's the last level? A ba oh, a a globe banner pattern. Ooh. Is that the only way you could get that thing? All right. So now we've got a master cartographer there. Now is our librarian a master also? Excuse me. Hello. Uh, no, only an expert. Now, unfortunately, it's piercing four. Be nice if I had a trident. That would be lovely for that. Fire protection, aqua affinity. So probably have to buy some glass. I've been buying. Yeah, all right. I'll get some glass from you. All right, there you go. That should give us our last level for that. Good and oh, okay. That just unlocks. A name tag so that's the so that's all we have so now we've got masters in every thing oh, okay yeah okay yeah I'm done for the day thank you uh, uh, if I can get out of here <laughs> oh well all right fine I'll leave I'll leave my plan for the cyan banners is to mark that we have a spruce village here. And so I will just plop this right here. How about right here? And I will grab my map. Now, because I have the cartographer in there, I naturally bought a map from him while we were going through the trying to level him up and I decided to blow it out as much as possible so I created this map and I went and explored all throughout the area I spent a great deal of time between episodes going through I was wondering where that cat went oh no no that's a new cat I did manage to have a white cat that was inside the house I decided to have follow me on and I did a huge amount of exploring and I think the white cat disappeared all right, there we go. And, oh, is there? Yeah, all right. So you can see there, fortunately I'm right on top of it. So, actually just get rid of the shield. No, that did not appear. Hmm, maybe I try it without the shield and see what would happen. I think all you aren't you supposed to just have to ah there it is okay I must have gone in the lower part instead of the upper part all right good so that tells me there that there is a village at that location now so happens that there are three villages on this map one is of course right here there's one right down about here I will say and that's another spruce village. There is a plains village right around here-ish, I think. Now, one of my plans for this is, in addition to fortifying this village, which is my primary purpose of this series, but I suspect I'll have extra time before we go to 115. And if that's the case, then I plan to see if I could build a swamp village. Now, we have a swamp area right here. And you have some... Swampland around here. Now the question is, if this is swampland that's near this plains village, then I may just move some people in this plains village 
down to the swap and I can use that as a to build it because what it happens is I need people. There's a lot of people here, but there are very few professions. So I figure if I could well, actually that's probably the village right there because those things might be buildings. Or that or the rocks. But anyway, the idea there is to come along, move them to a swamp, either some people from this village down to the swamp down there, or some people from this village. If that's a swamp, we could go there. Wherever find a good swamp, move the people down there. And that could be a secondary plan for this particular series, is to see if I could build up a swamp village. Because you can make swamp villages now, they have their own distinct look, but they just don't spawn naturally in the world. You just have to make them. Same thing is true with jungle villages. Now, unfortunately, the jungle I went to earlier and the swamp that was over there is outside of this map. And I figure I'm going to see if I could concentrate as much as possible to be on that particular map. And this map right here is a subset of that map. And, of course, this is where I've been building things already. And this is where I plan to do things today after I get after this little preamble here. Oh, and it is getting to be near something. I'm hoping that everybody is still alive. There's, see, there's our armorer, there's our toolsmith, they're all going to bed. Hopefully they're all are all right. The cartographer also provided me with a couple of maps, a notion exploration map to find a monument, which is right there. I went out exploring to see if I could find the monument, and as you can see, I did manage to find it. So that's the first time I found a monument with the help of a map there. But if you look on the bottom right, let me switch this out. If you look at the bottom right there, you'll see this tiny little dot to say where I am. So I had to travel a long way out in order to get there. So it's a bit out of the way for me to go there. On my way back, I did run into another monument, which is technically further from here than this one is, but it might be a little bit more convenient. I have to decide on that. And I decide if I want to bother tackling an ocean monument that that's that, that's that, <clears throat> that far away. It depends on whether or not I decide I ever need anything like prismarine or the prismarine lamps or anything like that. The other thing, of course, I also got from there was a woodland exploration map, which is right here. And you can see I've pretty much explored out this particular area. So you have the mansion right down there on the left side, this huge structure that's right there. So I managed to get that. That's all through. We got land, water, land, water alternating. And this thing is right next to a massive swamp. So it was really fun getting out to be there. In the upper right area, we've got a village. So we have one of those things also in the vicinity of there. Now, at least with a woodland mansion, I will be able to set up a little bit a little base in the area and then head on inside it's not very deep into the into the dark oak area so i might be able to do that without too much interference i would have to see about that the big trouble is though that this is way 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 out there i mean 16,000 blocks away. And that is no exaggeration. And therefore, going that far out will be... Oh, actually, it is an exaggeration. It's 13,000 blocks away. 13,500 blocks away. Not 13,000 blocks away. Now, of course, we go in the other direction. Well, use the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe it's 14,000 and all. So, right, 14,000 blocks away. It's just that because of the trajectory I took, it wound up being more like 16,000 on my way out there. 
So I would have to go there, I think, after I do everything else for this series. And I say, all right, what do I want to do now? Is there extra time? And if there is, then I might go and tackle Woodland Mansion. Probably not before that point. And finally, on the way there, I did find a treasure map. And that gave me a second heart of the sea. Now, of course, I was talking about earlier that maybe I won't be needing a... Where have I put that thing? Oh, I probably... Well, where have I put the Heart of the Seas? But the Heart of the Seas, I have two of them now. And, of course, I can't do anything with them until I tackle a monument. So, maybe I will need to tackle that monument at some point in the future. Now, with that out of the way... I need to take care of that farm area out there so I could get to the wall. And when I get to the wall, maybe I'll find a good place to put all these trophy banners that I've been taking since the beginning of the series. But I think it's time to get to our project now, which is the farm area. I have moved the sheep from over there out to here. And the chickens now have a larger area in which to range, and they've been busy producing eggs. So I'm certainly not going to have any trouble with eggs in the near future. But the idea here is that if I needed to supply arrows, this could be perhaps a good place in which to get some feathers for arrows. Because right now i got 41. I could also get them from villager trading, which is where I've got most of them so far. But I think it'll be cheaper to do it with chickens, if possible. And of course, I've got some sheep here and the cattle. And that means then I've got a little bit more area here for farming. Actually, actually no, this isn't for farming. Ah, duh! This is going to be my farm area right over here. And that means the first thing I need to do is to clear out some trees. Oh my, I not only found the two heart of the seas that I was talking about earlier, but three more illager banners. <laughs> oh boy, where am I going to put all of those? And I also have some lily pads here. The lily pads will come in handy for this particular part of the project. Oh, iron hoe, and I'll need the iron hoe. And I'm not going to be needing these items right here. Let's see. Anything I could take from here without ruining my inventory? Ah, well, all right. I'll have to take care of that later. I'll just throw the glass in there for now. In case you're wondering, yes, I am wearing diamond armor now. I finally broke down and bought some diamond armor from our villager friends there. And so now I have full diamond armor. I've got a diamond axe, a diamond sword, but I haven't had a chance to enchant it yet. Diamond pickaxe, where silk touch. So I'm using that as my... S so now I have silk touch finally. And so... I just have to remember that I have Silk Touch now. Because I've been going through most of this without it. See, we want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, oh yeah, I maybe I should get the water area done first before I start hoeing everything. And where's the water? There we go, now we have our two water points and just putting a lily pad over there to help prevent some accidents. And let's see if my understanding of this is proper enough that we are able to reach all the way there. If not, it's at least, yep, there it is. Yep, that does hydrate that bar. So I understood the videos properly. Because I think I said something about hydrating. Somewhere I'd read or watched that a single source of water can handle a 9x9 area. 
So that's what we're doing here. And this will be our main one. We are going to have four crops that we'll be growing in this particular area. I have a separate patch for pumpkins and melons. So this will be our second module. So we have two of these 9x9 nine nine modules. And what I'm going to do is I am going to have the more common ones that I'll be needing on the outside because they're going to be getting an extra row relative to the more uncommon ones. But I am going to be growing all the four major crops that are grown in this manner, even though I cannot for the moment think what I'm going to do with beets because there are many better crops than that. But I will do it just to say that I've got them all. The two common ones that I have are wheat because there's a great deal of wheat that we'll be needing. I have that one for trade. That's also a nice, useful one for breeding and all of that. And the second one I would like a large amount of would be carrots. So that way I get golden carrots and plus several other things I can do with carrots. And as for the carrots, I managed to get one off of a zombie between episodes. I was looking all over the place even before I went on that trip where I was exploring all around the map and where I was going to the outward looking for treasures and looking for that mansion and all that stuff. Even before then, I was running into every place where I can to see if I could find a carrot. Absolutely no villages had carrots. Carrots seem to have been virtually non-existent on this map. And eventually I just decided, well, I have a zombie spawner. Let's kill zombies. I had to kill a huge number of zombies, but eventually one was nice enough to drop a carrot for me, so I used that and a lot of bone meal in order to start growing my carrot crop. So now I have carrots. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And what I'm doing is I'm alternating plants. So those be wheat. Then we have carrots. Then beets. I only have five seeds for that. So it'll be a while before I finish all of that. But don't worry. The mechanics work equally well if you're next to a fallow one. So I'll just have it go fallow until I get all the beets there. Then I have the potatoes. Then there and all the way across there. So it'll be a while before it gets all filled up. But we this is a good start. And oh yeah, that one we followed because that's the beat row. So then we have the potatoes. As I said, I am playing lip service at least to the existence of the of the beet, even if there's not going to be much on the way in there. And I could use some bone meal, of course, in order to help speed things up along here, which is probably something I am going to do for the long term, because I am running out of many of these crops, as you can see. No beets, no potatoes, so back to wheat. And then this one would be carrots and that's why I put down the lily pad is so that I won't have to worry about falling into the water. I probably should do that in the village also so that we don't get villagers trapped in the water and all sorts of stuff like this. And this ends then with beets then I mean wheat and carrot and there you go. And that is our farm for the moment. And over time I will get this to be filled all the way through. I don't think I have room for another module. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I could theoretically extend this, except where would I put the melon patch? So I think I'll use this for melon patch because I think this is going to be plenty for my normal crop. So I'll just have this for my melons and for my pumpkins. So that'll be the next project. For the pumpkins and melons, what I'll be doing is I'll be going four out here, 
four out here and I'm going to have every other row just with dirt. Uh, actually, that usually winds up with things interfering with each other. Maybe I'll just put a second row here and not worry about that one. Yes, I think that will do well enough. So I have three rows here. That could be for one of them. This will be for the... Hmm, whichever is which, I'll have to decide on that. Because this one here we've got... Actually, let me... Flatten that out a little bit and I'll be using this. This tree will have to go and so with this mushroom here. Too bad. I'll find a nice place to grow mushrooms at some point because I'm sure I'm going to have to find a good place for growing mushrooms since that's another thing that will eventually be in the farm area. I'm just building the main farms for the moment. One, two, three, four, five. And this is the... Yeah, it's the next water spot and one lily pad all right good that used up my hoe maybe i should buy a diamond hoe i know it's not anything that's efficient to purchase or anything like this but it's available and there's always the you can do you do it because you can but Right now, what I need to do is to plant some melons and some... Oh, yeah, it's empty right now. Melons go right here. All right. I could turn melon slices into seeds and pumpkins. That's mushrooms. Oh, actually, toss the mushrooms into there. That's empty. Oh, pumpkin seeds. Yes. I will have more, said I'll do more pumpkins than that because even though the number of melons you need is fewer than the number of pumpkins with the trader, you get full pumpkins when you harvest them and you could use them for jack-o'-lanterns and stuff like that. So I will uh, concede that, I think it was Zuma Void is right that no, no, it's Mumbo Jumbo who was saying that pumpkins are more useful overall than melons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what I'll do is use the side with that's all the way with a full module with the that, and then I will put the all right, there we go. Then I'll do the melons for the one that is cut off a little bit short right here. It's not cut off short by too many, but a little short. There you go. Everything is nice and ready to start growing. Of course, it'll light when it hurt, but I'll have to do that over time. I was thinking, where would I put the torches? But wait a moment, this is a farm area. If there's any place where I could get away with using jack-o'-lanterns for light, this is that place. So, trying to find some... Are there any pumpkins in there? I actually, I think all I have... I could have probably traded all my pumpkins away. Or I'm keeping my pumpkins... Yeah, I'm keeping all my pumpkins down there for tr villager trading and the like. So I'll need a few of those to make jack-o'-lanterns. But for the moment, do I have any... Bone meal. Well, I've got plenty of it at the cabin, so that's where I will go. And I might as well deposit a couple of lily pads down by the farmer so that we don't have any accidents. And things are starting to grow here. I only found one pumpkin there, but I found plenty of jack o' lanterns already made, so might as well use those. And keep at least parts of these lit up even though some of the area probably won't be yeah and we'll just put one on all each end there 
be oh this corner here we could put there all right we could take care of that for now but why I really came here is to do a little give a little head start to my melons and pumpkins so that they'll all be ready Actually, I'll do at least this one row The other rows, I guess we could leave to grow naturally. That way we have a little bit for pumpkins and a little bit for melons at the start. Good, and before long, we'll have more of these things and we know what to do with, and I know that from personal experience. <laughs> there you go, and probably also throw some on some of the beets because the beets are Actually, most of the beets seem to be seem to look like that they're ready for harvest. Yeah. Okay. Which is probably good because I need some beet I need some beet seeds, and I don't need dandelions. See, even in Minecraft, gardeners have trouble running into dandelions. That's just the way things are. This time I've got 15 of them. And that gives us another row of one, two, three, four. And soon enough, we'll have them all the way through there. Now, unfortunately, I actually I got two more pieces of that. What are the carrots doing? The carrots are still pretty slow at the moment. I might be able to get a couple of them done, but it'll be a while before that's all done. All right, there you go. And then just have a small start to the last row. But most of this I'm just going to let grow naturally over time while I'm doing other projects. And it looks like the pecans and melons are already growing. Yay! So that takes care of my farm. And I think that'll start producing some a nice, healthy bounty there. And I can start filling up my barrels full of food. And the sun is setting on another day. And next time, I can finally get to the warehouse. And once I'm done with the warehouse, I have a nice storage facility. Then, to the wall, which is the entire purpose of this series. But until then, this is Final Needles reminding you to mine responsibly.